Calci Galaxy has been the WBA Super Flyweight Champion since 1984. Calcor Galaxy was the WBA Bantamweight Champion until he lost it in controversial circumstances in Korea to Sun Kill Moon last August. This was Galaxy's only defeat, but at 30 years of age, this could be his last chance. Like his brother, he's a knockout specialist. He stopped 18 opponents in 22 wins. Some record then for this slow-starting southpaw. Moon, four years younger, has had just nine professional contests, and he's won them all. Only one, in fact, has gone the distance. Despite his short career, he's already made two successful defenses of this championship. An explosive contest in prospect. Here are the highlights. Well, return fights don't always catch on, but these are such good performers. It's good fight anywhere in anybody's backyard. The Southpaw Galaxy, of course, he's got all the support now in Bangkok. What happened last time, it was sadly controversial, that Moon was cut in the sixth round, and then they gathered the scorecards, as they can do, with an accidental clash, and they had the Korean Moon ahead on points. So uh, Galaxy really made uh, a demonstration about that. He was quite upset, but that's what the rules are today as Lloyd Hunnigan uh, found out to his cost in London. So now, let's see whether Galaxy can avenge that only defeat. But make no mistake about it, Moon is a hard nut. We saw him box in the Los Angeles Olympics when he stopped John Highland in Liverpool. And although it's the well-muscled Thailand who always looks the stronger of the two, don't underestimate the new champion. who didn't hang around with two defences against Montserrat or Panama and Kobayashi of Japan. And yeah, they don't let these fellas hang about with easy jobs, Jim, as they say in the fight trade. And uh, it's maybe a good idea for Moon if, uh, obviously, Galaxy is the big danger uh, as far as losing his title is concerned. It's maybe a good idea to have a couple of quick defences, make some money before he's back in again with Galaxy, because obviously this is a tough match for him. He really is amazingly built the Halco Galaxy. Uh, Hal Sai's twin brother also was champion, the first in history to twins uh, to simultaneously as well hold the world championships. Kalkar only had his for three months, so he really wants it back now. Borrowed name, of course, Galaxy. Comes after an old nightclub, I'm told. His real name is uh, Seikan. But there's sort of annoying, tough casualness about Galaxy. He's sort of saying, oh dear, here we go again. And he's so strong and unaffected, Jim, isn't he? Getting yeah. on, knocking on a bit, but he didn't he didn't turn pro until he was uh, quite late anyway. 26 before he uh, really got into international style boxing, having given up the old Muay Thai stuff. Well, Moon's been taking advantage of uh, Galaxy's uh, lackadaisical attitude in the in the first round here, he's really been getting his punches off a lot quicker. Galax is just a little bit too casual, but uh, as we know, he is a slow starter, he warms to the task as he goes along. It was a tough job for a visiting referee, Yoshida from Japan, for this one, pointed of course by the WBA. Great amateur record, by the way, Moon. So the nine pro wins is a little deceptive. Although he was beaten on a cut by the Dominican Republic in Lasco in, uh, in Los Angeles, he was world amateur champion after that. So there it is, the scorecards then for the end of the first round. And there's the rundown. As I said, he's world amateur champion in 86. He got well paid to turn pro, and I don't, I don't blame him, he was a hot property. One of the few Koreans that I've seen around that doesn't do too much acting when, he was, when he's fighting. And here's the rundown on Galaxy then. And he first won that WBA championship back in 88 against the Puerto Rican. Out then for the second round. And obviously they're now, well, certainly as far as uh, Galaxy is concerned, it's not only head clashes, Jim. We don't want to repeat of the first fight with you know, a dispute like that. He was quite badly cut, I thought, Moon. Although, you remember he made a bit of a meal of it, wrapping a huge towel around his face on the way out. Yeah, well, there are a few rules in boxing I don't really agree with. And uh, I think uh, if a 
the box was unable to continue. He should lose in uh, an immediate rematch. I think it's. Uh, I think it goes over the score with all the, the new rules and regulations they're bringing in. But uh, Galaxy usually likes to go forward. But uh, Moon is not allowing that. He's, he's really breaking up his rhythm and pushing him back. I remember in the Olympic saying to John Highland, don't be too upset. I think this fellow's going to be world champion one day. And he insisted uh, on having a photograph taken with him. So uh, if John's looking at him, well, I was right. They're unknowns, Jim, sometimes when you go in the amateur ring with them, but you can always tell that little bit of ability. And certainly he's not making it easy for Galaxy. Then he's got to come at him, the challenger, for a change. Moon's moves are not really very smooth. He hasn't really found his rhythm. He's throwing some awkward punches, leading with the right hand and crossing his feet over. He's going to have to settle down and get some rhythm because uh, you can't really afford to make uh, basic mistakes with this man, he'll take your head off. Maybe that's an example of Galaxy trying to keep it a bit at long range, not on any of the heads bumping in there and spoiling it. I mean, he, it could happen to him and he could lose that way with him being cut instead of Moon. Although I doubt it, it looks like he it pickles his face uh, with, the, with the brine water, doesn't it, Jim? He's uh, a hard nut. Paul's talking about if he wins and he'd like to come to Britain and fight Billy Hardy. And I said, yeah, that's fine. You've got to get past the, the manager, Denny Mancini, first. I think Moon's plan is to be the aggressor, the push galaxy back but he's making too many mistakes he, he really a little bit ragged his performance is a little bit ragged at the moment he's saying watch the head there Jim that looked like as though he didn't fancy that all now they're exchanging some hard stuff only eight stone six remember but these these fellas bunch punch like full featherweights even lightweights so there the, the crowd saying our man started to fight back a bit now and they're looking at the corner there I think Moon, Moon's just cut around the face there because the referee had a good look I don't seem to be too perturbed, they're just wiping things away. Yeah, let's have a look at that uh, replay, see if you can see a head butting there. No, nope, caught him with the right hand over the top, didn't he? I do think that's actually when the complaint took place, it was a little bit later in the round, a little clash of heads took place. It was more of a kind of shove there. Out for the third round then. And I'm wondering now whether the 30-year-old Galaxy now is going to sort of the old line about warm to his task or something now because he got through some hard shots there. And the last thing he wants to do is to leave this one to the, the judges' cards at all. Uh, they come in from uh, California, Larry Rosadilla and uh, Fritz Werner with the Japanese Ken Maruta. Actually, an American who's lived in uh, Japan all his life, I think. this casualness at Galaxy that never ceases to amaze me, Jim. I mean, you get the impression that he's fighting just another guy, but I mean, he's far from that, the Korean. Yeah, he, he almost looks so comfortable, so relaxed. But I think Moon has made his mind up. He doesn't want Galaxy coming at him because uh, although he's a little bit ragged at times, he keeps pushing Galaxy, Galaxy back. And I think he's a good judge. I don't think you're, you're a man with Galaxy's power. He don't really want him coming forward. 
Yeah, there you see the damage around Moon's Eye there. Now that will be a pity if they stop the other way this time. And if they do go to scorecards and the judges have got Moon in front, well, I think you better duck under the ring. If they do love a demonstration in uh, Korean boxing, as we found out in the Olympics in Seoul. Thing, the Japanese referee staying well away from the action and not making a fuss that uh, Moon has been cut Jim and doing anything demonstrative at all. No, well, uh, I think that one of the worries fighters and the referee keeps going over at the end of rounds and uh, breaking up the action. The referee's doing a good job and it's not a, a difficult fight to handle. And it goes the other way sometimes. The great story of Harry Duke with Walter McGowan in his World Championship fight when he got cut late and he just looked at it and says, don't worry, Walter, it isn't anything. Get on and win the championship. That's what I like to hear with a pro referee. Give the man a bit of help. So Ray Galaxy just ignores punches coming in. I mean, it's... He really is built like a sort of brick shelter, isn't he? A bantamweight of all things. And we're out for the fifth round. And the corner man have worked well on uh, Moon's damage around the eye there. Nobody's getting too panicky in the corner at all. I think the photographers have been zooming in on it a little bit, but that's uh, the closest he's had to any worry. And Galaxy really hasn't gone mad at all. I think he saves his strength anyway, Jim. I mean, he's knocking on a bit at 30. He was doing the kickboxing at the age of five, apparently. So uh, he knows his way around a bit and doesn't want to... He still have, probably has to work hard to do the 8-6 limit. I think he would be happier if he could back Moon up a little bit more. He's allowing Moon to to push him back far too often I don't think it really suits his style he can box on the retreat but I think uh, he gets a lot more power into his punches uh, if he's moving forward yeah now he's getting a bit back in command now he, he allowed Moon an early start there he couldn't really afford to do that Galaxy in case of accidents makes a fighter nervous Jim at the thought of cuts and uh, losing on points when he thinks he's got the second half of the fight in hand knows he's got the stamina. There's another complaint from Moon about the, the flash again. Yeah, he'll do well to get away with it in Korea, I tell you that. He's a little bit scared to do that, although if he thought he could, I'm sure he would now, Moon, because this is a be much better galaxy than it was in the first part. When Galaxy goes to work with uh, a lot more authority in his punches, he puts them together far better than, than Moon Moon, that little bit ragged, but uh, a real sound little professional Galaxy when, when he gets to work, but he's going to have to raise his pace a little bit. likely for Moon to run out of ideas but he's just showing those signs of frustration and obviously the damage demoralizing as well he tends to show a few punches Galaxy without unloading doesn't he, he threatens a few times I still feel he should be trying to back Moon up now. Moon's doing the same things all the time from the straight and just throwing little short straight punches. Galaxy should be sobbing him out by now and uh, getting his own act really on the road. And I want the fellow back in the corner as quick as possible to keep the patchwork going up there. There it is. 
That's now, it really is bad news there. The seconds have got to work hard, and I don't hope that won't interfere with the result this time. Jim, have a quick look at this replay. Well, this is where Galaxy really put some punches together. You can see the power. He's well set on his feet. The uh, power in both hands. He really had been under pressure there. But uh, he tended to go back to sleep again shortly after that. Sixth round. So then halfway, almost halfway anyway, through this uh, WBA Bantamweight Championship, 118 pounds, eight, eight stone six. So many weights around this bit now that uh, the, I once said before when we watched that the, the immortal Jimmy Wilde probably could have won five World Championships in a week. Uh, such an easy difference for him would have been super flies, flies, light flies, super bantams, all within two or three pounds of each other. It looks as though Galaxy's got it well under control, in the bag, as they say now, Jim, don't you think, especially at home? Yeah, his punches are far better, but uh, I think he's just allowing, he's allowing him too much scope. See, see, when he goes to work, when he starts backing Moon up, he's a completely different fighter, and he gets Moon onto the ropes and really gets the, the power into the punches. He's like a class above Moon, but he, he, he doesn't seem to want to sustain that pressure. had four wins, of course, Galaxy, since he lost on that uh, disputed decision, as he would call it, quite rightly, all by knockouts. And his last, in fact, was against the Korean, and, uh, and that was last January. Apart from being abnormally strong, Jim, he's such a difficult-looking southpaw to be because he hits you with both hands. He, he, do, he doesn't favour any one punch all the time, does he? Yeah, he, he can lead with either hand, and I think part of his strategy is that dead hand look. And when he takes one of Moon's punches, he, he doesn't even bother moving before or after. He just looks straight back, and here he comes again. See, but when he moves forward, he really is a, a class above Moon. Was like the great players on the football pitch, they don't seem to give themselves more time than they should, Jim. And he can certainly do this, can't he? Throws punches, says, Right, I'll have a little breather now, and it's just incredible at this level that he gets away with it. Yeah, he always seems to relaxed, he's never in any hurry, he's always, he's everything's under control. I can finish this uh, as soon as I like. I'd like to see him as a 20-year-old anyway, what he could do, imagine that, at that time, but uh, he, didn't, he didn't start in uh, pro boxing until he was uh, 26, pro boxing in the Western or international style. Well, it looks as though Galaxy has got it out of control, but in this game you never can tell, he claimed he was robbed last time, could that happen again or not? Break for the boxers, break for us, and we'll be right back with the action. <laughs> then for the ninth round and uh, still a bit of a struggle really for Galaxy Jimmy hasn't been able to deck Moon at all not that I'm a bit surprised about that because he's a hard nut too as I've been saying all along but he, he looks as though he may have it control now yeah well he's quite happy with what he's doing but I think he should raise the pace that little bit Yeah, you know, it's it, he's done well, Moon. There, not to be too worried about the, the cut eye and the cornerman must have worked well there. The doctor had a good glimpse at it, and that was all. The referees, he's done a good job here, and it hasn't been a difficult fight for him to handle. No, the, the referee has kept well out of, of the action. They've always been close, but not really too many clinches. A couple of clashes of heads, you know, which Moon seemed to come off worse than he did the complaining. But apart from that, very clean. I just feel the uh, Galaxy's tactics. Uh, well, not what I would have suggested, just as I'm speaking, another clash of heads. But I've always felt all the way through, Galaxy should be pushing Moon back, because he has the, 
in a different league when he does that. Oh, it looks as though it's worsening too now, but uh, certainly now Carl galaxy has got to be ahead anyway, so we did go against him and I did. It's got to be an accidental flash, uh, really, Jim, as well. If it's if it's a deliberate one, uh, then, well, you could be disqualified. It's a bit rare, though. And now they're doing this ridiculous thing about taking one point off uh, one box and two points off the other. So I see no no point in that if you give, to give the horrible pun. Yeah, well, as, as I said earlier, I think they may be becoming too contrived in some of the, some of the rules. Uh, keep them simple. If, uh, if an unsatisfactory ending should occur, they can always order a rematch, and that's quite simple. Uh, I don't agree with uh, quite a few of the rules they're bringing in. Now, the, the British board, funny enough, over the years have been sticklers about our rules have stood the test of time, and basically they have. If we get the mandatory eight count, I'd be a lot happier, but the rest of it... Uh, well, I'll go with that, our rules. We don't, we don't need the West, rest of the world. I mean, it was invented in, uh, in Britain, wasn't it? So, uh, you know, we don't need other people to tell us how to do it. But it's, this is in their country, and they're under WBA rules, and uh, Britain also are members of the WBA. So whatever rules they come up with, we've got to abide by them. They usually have a supervisor, a WBA man on site here to report back what happens here, how it's scored. It looks like a washboard there, doesn't it? Rippling there. It's, uh, it's hard to believe we're uh, looking at a couple of bantamweights. Clearly, is a, a powerful looking man in the galaxy. It's Thailand is, can certainly train for a fight. You know, you're looking at uh, Chip Ladar, who's been a great champion and now regained it. And uh, the Galaxy twins. Just look at this, he's, he's making an effort of walking back to the corner now, Galaxy. So really hard work going on as we come out for the 10th then. And uh, that's the face of a warrior, although he's only had nine pro fights, and as I said, he's fought all the hard nuts as an amateur, and he's seen a few wars in his time. Remember, he defeated the American Tony Pruitt uh, in the third round. That gives you a bit of a look at the class of the, the Korean. And I suppose he can say it's just my form. I would find a champion and now challenger as tough as Galaxy to take on. Stamps his authority when he has to, Gully. Looks like he got tagged with a shot there, though. Yeah, that one stopped him right in his tracks. Uh, you know, he's holding for the first time in the fight. He's grabbing hold of Moon. I don't think he's seriously hurt, but I think that one shocked him a little bit. Well, that, that's a, a sight for sore eyes there. The strong man having to hang on. He's still got a lot to do, though, Moon Jim, isn't he? Yeah, well, all the way through, Galaxy's punching has been better. He's been far more accurate. I, I've always felt, uh, I've said earlier, Moon was a little bit ragged. He's cut forward. He's just cut forcing himself forward, not, not so much thought in his performance. Uh, Galaxy, a little bit too cool at times, uh, I feel he's allowed Moon to come forward too often but his punching has been better and more accurate A couple of brave warriors aren't they these uh, you know, sort of guys wouldn't mind having in the trenches with you, whatever have you, they're not really little guys but they'll stand there to the end When he pivots like that, Galaxy Jim, when he swings round, that's he really gets some weight into that punch. Shouldn't have turned his back on Moon earlier like that, but he's he used it now. He looks as though he's tiring again to me, Jim. Yeah, well, whenever Galaxy gets a chance, he, he's dropping his hands down as he's doing now. It's as though just to, to let them relax that couple of seconds and then back into action again. 
he's never had the life about his performance that Moon's had. Moon really has driven himself on, tried to raise the pace and dictate the pace. Galaxy is the one who's tried to, to calm the pace down. He has been very accurate, very powerful with his punches, but uh, a little bit more life, I think, is needed. Good round, this, though. has to be guided back to the corner not that he was in trouble but they want to work on the eye oh dear it's got a lot worse what a shame now because he's, he came into the fight a bit there moon and on sheer guts are in a bad position too during the cut well the, the good thing about the cut uh, is uh, between the eye and the eyebrow if it was on the eyebrow then it would probably I guess it would worsen and it could really end up with a terrible cut but where it is uh, it's easier to keep out of trouble, so it may not get any worse. It was bleeding a bit at the end of the, the tenth round there, but uh, may not get any worse. Well, let's hope now with six minutes to go, if it goes that long, that uh, on guts alone, Moon is entitled to hang in there. He wants to give a champion performance. He doesn't want to give it away. He's got a lot of ground to make up, certainly on Jim Watney's scorecards here, but as I said, the two judges from California and the other from Japan they're going to sort this one out the referee doesn't vote and also Jim I think the heat's now telling us it would inevitably in any fight even in a cool arena um, but uh, as you can see, they've been sweating all the way through here, and I suppose they're feeling the pace now. Well, Galaxy has always been the one of the two who's tried to control the pace, tried to pull the pace down. Moon's tried to, to move into a higher gear, but the Galaxy doesn't want to allow that. And, and I don't know why, because he's so much more effective when he pushes Moon back and really lets the punches go, as he's doing now. Look at the leverage he's getting into these punches. Oh, and he's got Moon Bang in trouble here. It's the first time he's been heavily under fire and he's going down from it and I tell you that is a sight because this champion you don't often see him on the deck the hard man from Korea and he really looks exhausted as he's getting the mandatory aid he's looking at his corner they're waving him on all right Moon but uh, it must be a hard thing to pull himself together here if Galaxy wants to unload can he stop him in the 11th And he has, it looked as though for a minute he was going to give him another count, and he is. I thought he'd stopped it there, Jim. That was a surprise. He made a whole thing of pushing him back to the neutral corner and now box on. So two counts there. Uh, I think Moon will do well to survive this round. These punches are really solid. Galaxy standing his ground. Here come the punches now. It doesn't stop. Everyone a solid shot. Moon fighting back, but heavily under fire. All that lethargy's gone now, isn't he? When he when he's got him there for the finish, that's what he wants now. He's a good game fellow, not that I'm the slightest surprised about Moon. You don't have a strong amateur record as he had, if you're a bit faint-hearted, but uh, it's up to Galaxy now to really clinch it. Can he do it in this round? He's had him all over the place, he's running out of time. And he looked as though he got the old-fashioned standing count there, Jim, that the WBA must have allowed OK. That's normally waived in world title fights by the other associations. That's what confused me there. I thought the fight was going to be over. Yeah, well, it's a, I mean, a standing count. I agree with the mandatory eight count. If a fighter goes over, should have eight seconds to continue, but I don't like standing counts. No, that's very amateur. You know, they can do that. Well, now, can they get him to come out for the last round? Let's have a look at this one again, then. So look at the difference in Galaxy's work when he's moving forward and uh, pushing Moon back. Look at the power in the punches. Moon just, it wasn't one shot that put him over, it was just uh, the culmination of blows. Touch gloves, says the referee, final round. And as far as uh, Moon's concerned, I would think he welcomed it now because he's really got a, well, what could he do now? Some, really something spectacular to try and win in the last. There's never been really any doubt, certainly on our cars now, that Galaxy's winning it clearly. and. Uh, the knockdowns in that round, or at least the counts, to put it technically, in the 11th round, have made it comfortable for him. But now, you never know, we've, we've seen dangers in the last rounds of World Championships before, Jim. 
you know, we, you would expect Galaxy to come onto his front foot and start backing him up again. But maybe he's quite happy, he's ahead in points and he's not in any hurry as he's been all through. But uh, after such a good 11th round, you would think he would take the initiative here. Yeah, well, it's either that or take no chances to say the corner man, you've got it under control, why, why get in there and get involved too much, you never know. It's not the sort of great fighter stuff, because the really great fighters still want to go out and finish it in the last round. I remember that happened with uh, the great Muhammad Ali in a non-title fight, which was 15 rounds with Oscar Bonavina, the wild bull, and he still managed to win it in the last round, incredible. But if there's any badges to courage going, certainly the challenger, will, uh, not the challenger, the defending champion will get it here. At, uh, I said challenger because at this stage that's what he's going to be after this fight, if, if our reckoning is right. Well, he certainly recovered from that 11th round. He looked at it in the verge of being knocked out. Uh, uh, for me, the standing count probably is just what saved him, but he's recovered well. And uh, he's trying to, again, push Galaxy back. Real last-ditch stuff, isn't it, coming now from Moon? You've got to admire that. He's not going to let go of that championship easily, that's one thing. And the money that goes with it, of course. And I'm amazed, really, that they've managed to patch that eye up so early on it was cut like that. And uh, they've done well. As you say, Jim, it wasn't right on the eyebrow, which would have probably burst open like a second mouth by now. Well, the old usual fight. There's no, no giving. Dallas is still dropping his hands every chance he gets. I think he must be feeling uh, very weary in the shoulders. As soon as he steps out of punching range, he's dropping his hands, then back up again, back into action. I think he really is feeling the pace. And then almost punched himself to a standstill as well to win it. And there's no doubt in our book then that uh, Calcor Galaxy has regained the WBA Championship of the World to become the most famous uh, championship twins in history. Well, there it is. Well, I mean, that's really getting in posh for the pictures, Jim. I never noticed them doing that with you when you were winning World Championship. And the face always of a game loser and uh, one for the loser please in his case would be quite appropriate and the first defeat in his career remember and he's done it there's no doubt about it of course unanimous verdict for galaxy so now where is his next defense going to be and whoever it is well i don't uh, really envy him the task <laughs>